So what I was telling in my previous session is that <clears throat> correlation coefficient can be studied uh, to find out the association between two variables. This association between the variables must be uh, free from any sort of causation effect. Uh, secondly, correlation coefficient can be calculated by the formula given by Carl Pearson. Sometimes it is also called a product moment correlation coefficient. And second, uh, the third point is that, uh, that I was discussing my, in my previous session, various examples where you can find out the correlation between the variables where if the variables are of this nature or that nature, the correlation between them will be positive. If one variable is increasing, another is decreasing, the correlation between them will be negative. And if there is a co correlation between the variable is zero, uh, correlation coefficient between the variables are zero, then there is no correlation between them. That point which I told you that will be discussed later on. Now I, I was not able to show you negative correlation, perfect negative correlation in the previous example. So let's let let us try to find it out. If I can show it, let us set one another example over here. Uh, <clears throat> suppose I am taking the values in the in the in the following manner. One two, three, four, five, okay? And suppose to calculate, to calculate the values of Y, suppose I'm considering the linear relation. Y equals to X minus two. Let us try to find out what is happening over here. Here you see that X is increasing with one unit. So one minus two means minus one, two minus two means zero, three minus two means one, four minus two means two, isn't it? Five minus two is three. Then also it is uh, actually coming out as one, but I don't know what is happening. Uh, the actual relation which I'm considering over here, y equal to x minus two, this, uh, this thing is not actually being satisfied. I mean, perfect negative correlation example, I'm not able to find out right now at this moment. Here also, as you can see that, uh, Actually, that will not happen now. Actually, why it is not happening? That is the logic behind it. Just look at the value. Look at the value of y. Look at, look at the value of x, first of all. x is an increasing value, isn't it? x is an increasing value. Uh, first, first value of x is 1. Second value of x is 2. So there is an increase by plus 1. Then there is an increase by plus 1. Here is an increase by plus one. Here is an increase by plus one. Here also the values are increasing by plus one, as you can see. And therefore, this positive correlation one is coming. This positive correlation one is coming. This should not be in case of perfect negative correlation. Perfect negative correlation, you have to have values like where the values are actually decreasing of decreasing type. Okay, so you have to set the values in the following manner. First value, uh, you are considering a first value, then the next value will be a kind of, uh, should, be, has, should have some kind of decreasing tendency. But here the value are of actually increasing tendency. Minus one to zero, zero to one, one to two, two to three that is also increasing. And therefore, perfect although you are considering the equation y equal to x minus two, this perfect correlation, uh, this perfect positive correlation is coming. Let us try to change these values and let's see what happens. Uh, I will now consider 
just the opposite. I'll consider three to one zero minus one. Okay. So I'm going to consider this as three two one zero minus one. Ah, uh, now it is becoming perfect negative correlation, which is minus one. That is the error which I was making in the previous session also. The that point actually was not properly discussed. Just look at it. I hope you have not. You are now understanding what is the why this is happening. Again, I am showing it. Here you see. Just look at the values. It is increasing by plus one. This is increasing by plus one. This is increasing by plus one. But here it is decreasing by minus one, decreasing by minus one, decreasing by minus one, decreasing by minus one, and therefore perfect negative correlation is coming over here. You just note this point out. Okay, this is not the ex. This is not the equation that will be that is being followed over here. What sort of equation are they following? That can be found later on. This is not the appropriate class to deal with that. We can find it out later on. What sort of relation they are actually having between them this is another top topic, another chapter. But my uh, the point which I wanted to make was that here you can see that capital X is increasing and capital Y is decreasing, and therefore the correlation coefficients R of x y equal to minus one. X and Y are having perfect negative correlation. Perfect negative correlation. Okay. So you just note this point. Yeah, the tendency of the curve is like this, a decreasing tendency. And <clears throat> Another one, another point I, that I want to I want to make over here is about something which is also very important. <clears throat> sometimes you can find, sometimes you can find pair of random variables where suppose, let me write it first of all. I'm considering another example right now. So I'm considering the equation y equal, y equal to x plus five. Then in that case, for one, we have six. For this, we have seven. For this, we have eight. For this, we have nine. And for this, we have 10. So we have this perfect correlation. Sometimes it may so happen that in certain cases, you have suddenly found a value like this. Okay, now what is happening? Look at these values, first of all. Look at this value. This particular thing, uh, discussion is very important. So just uh, pay, pay your attention. Just, you, you see that these values are increasing, no problem. Increasing by plus one. Okay, so there was no, any, no problem with uh, the values of X. Here the increase was by plus one. Here the increase was by plus one. Here the increase was by plus one. But here the increase was not by plus one. Here the increase was not by plus one. Rather, the increase is by plus ninety-one. So that's that's why that's why you have got hundred. And just look at the figure. This was the increasing tendency, no problem. Okay, they were increasing. You can very well say that the tendency of the curve is increasing. But look at this point. Look at this point. A big gap is over there. A huge gap is over there. Sudden jump, sudden jump to this particular point. Okay, at, and this particular point is actually as if it seems that it is actually separated from from wherever source you have collected your data this is entirely separated from the, this this data sub, it seems as if it has nothing to do with the current previous set of datas a friend of yours 
who a, a classmate of yours who act, who always likes to be separated from each of each one of you he doesn't talk to anyone he doesn't have any friend he doesn't have any enemy no teachers can identify him no no student is liking him it he is it looks at the, as if it is, he is an outcast ostracized from the society so this kind of thing can also happen in this kind of thing can also happen in the case of scattered diagram the correlation coefficient <clears throat> correlation coefficient such a thing such an item if present has a special name to, given to them and that is called outlier that is called outlier outlier just look at the correlation positive correlation coefficient between the two items between these items capital x and capital y suppose suppose there were there were no outliers suppose there were the positive correlation between the between them was the perfect positive correlation was being played between the two variables capital x and capital y but when you consider an outlier like this the correlation coefficient is changing 0.725953 is the correlation coefficient and this correlation coefficient that you are getting is not reflecting the physical system clearly why because this correlation coefficient is getting affected by the outlier it is not the actual scenario such a positive correlation coefficient positive correlation coefficient value that you are getting is not because of the first four values it is because of the last value and in no way this is going to uh, this is going to be the part uh, this is going to be to be the appropriate correlation coefficient between the two variables in no way so in that particular case in that particular case what you are supposed to do is that we will get rid of this outlier getting rid uh, to get rid of the outlier doesn't mean that you are you are going to delete this item you are not going to do this okay if you do in excel sheet if you do in excel sheet you just deleting the item the blank blank cell of the excel sheet will be equal to zero when you when there is nothing written in the excel sheet they are, uh, they consider it to be the excel is considering consider the value to be zero as uh, a child learns that uh, nothing means zero so excel is fed the program that if there is nothing written on it on the cell then the value is zero but if you retain it manually it doesn't have any meaning because number of variables present in the under the column x and number of variable present under the column y they are not of equal of equal size here are five values here are four values actually correlation coefficient cannot be found so the thing which is happening over here just listen to me very carefully i know that you are going to do if you are, do not pay attention you are going to do some sort of mistake over here when i am not writing anything over here the excel is considering this value to be zero and therefore it is calculating the correlation coefficient one but if you try to do it on pen by pen and paper this doesn't have any meaning that you are retaining the value of x and you are cancelling the value of y if you want to cancel this item you have to cancel both the values of x and y so let us try to do it i shall also cancel the value of x then also you are getting one but it is now it has become a meaningful expression why because number of variables present in x number of sorry number of values in x must be equal to number of values 
in y for calculating the correlation coefficient remember this particular thing why i was calculating why i, I was uh, not considering uh, this fifth value because the fifth value is the outlier and we have to get rid of the outlier so there is a very important point that i want to make over here always try to get rid of out liars if there are any if there are any always try to get rid of outliers if there are any remember this important point try to recall that what i told you about when i started showing this calculation in the excel file i was telling you that before you calculate the correlation coefficient using the carl pearson correlation coefficients formula first plot the scatter diagram you just plot the scatter diagram just look at the values the way they are associated with one another i told you to plot the scatter diagram first because i wanted to wanted you to check for the outliers the presence of the outliers if there is there if you can find any value of any such outliers present in the data then uh, in that case uh, uh, and if you retain if you can find such data present in some some data in your chart then first and the foremost duty that you have to perform is that you have to delete the entire cell for both x and y and then you perform the calculation of carl pearson correlation coefficient you shouldn't retain the outlier always remember this so my uh, so step number 1 plot scatter diagram step number 2 plot uh, sorry not plot calculate correlation coefficient if you ask me that why these outliers actually why these outliers actually come into the picture was it a sort of error or not if you ask me that why this happened why these outliers they actually come into the picture then i can cite one example and that example you have to this example is an actually a, it's a true story it's a fact that and i read it from a from a, from a book last year that incident which happened in amazon amazon uh, sh shopping uh, portal one of the students uh, from a, i'm it's not a story of india it is a story of a maybe it is from england or story was from america i cannot recall because that is irrelevant one student one phd student suddenly he wanted to buy a book because of some sort of requirement of his uh, and the book was actually written by his uh, guide his supervisor so he wanted to buy that book and the book was not available in the market because uh, you know that uh, the pre last year there was there were there was lockdown everywhere all over the world and shops were closed so the student decided to buy the book from amazon so he looked for the book written by his supervisor and he found that uh, the price of the book is uh, showing the, the they are the price of the book was showing to be i'm i'm telling you in indian rupees because uh, i mean i can mm, then 
make you understand the matter very well because I'm not familiar with the current uh, value of dollar in, in, in terms of Indian currency. So I, will miss, I can miss certain points to, while discussing this particular issue. So I'm telling uh, in terms of Indian currency, suppose the price of the book was showing to be that time it was showing to be 800 or something, rupees 800 or something in Indian currency. So the student decided, okay, it's showing too much That's because students do not have any money. Okay, they do because they do not earn. So he decided that uh, let's wait for a few more days uh, when the price will fall further or I can buy it or I'll search, I'll look for second hand copy of the book. Because this book is not that kind of book where you can invest money, that amount of money, 800 for the book. If it were the book of by Euclid, uh, it were the book like elements by Euclid, then you can spend money. But for this book, this book is not that worth buying. But since it is his supervisor's book, uh, the book has been written by his supervisor. Probably the supervisor has asked him to buy the book. So he has to, because he has to, after all, at the end of the day, he has to make his supervisor happy. After one month, he said, again, tried to look for the book in the Amazon. And there the, he, find, he, he found that the price was showing that time, um, I, uh, near about in Indian currency, rupees uh, 3000. So he became perplexed. Two months ago, I show I, I found the price of the book to be 800 only, and now it is showing 3000. So he waited for some more time. After three months, he again looked for the book, and suddenly he show, show he saw that the price of the book was showing to be 50,000. His supervisor's book cost 50,000 at that time. Third time when he checked for it. And he decided that something was messed up over here. First of all, let me complete the story. So he, uh, and then I'll, I'm going to tell, talk about that. <clears throat> about, the, um, about the outlier, because my point is outlier. My point is not uh, what is happening in Amazon and the climax of the story. My point is out there. I'll come to that point. First of all, let me finish the story. He went to his supervisor and he said, sir, your, the book which you had, he wrote is being sold in Amazon at the cost of rupees 50,000. Supervisor suddenly, uh, he, he didn't know that. And uh, Amazon is selling his book at the cost of such a such a big amount, so he must have got this this um, that amount of that proportion um, proportional amount of uh, commission for the, writing the book. So he actually called the technical staff so staff of Amazon, and after a few months of investigation, later it has been found that whoever writes the price algorithms in the Amazon software, he forgot to put the upper cap or upper limit for the upper price cap for the part for that particular book some time limit was set in the time limit he, they actually wrote the program like this after 10 days the price will increase like that after again after 10 more days it will increase like that but the upper cap they didn't set the upper cap there was no upper limit there was no upper boundary so it kept on increasing and then they rectified the thing and after that, after again one month, when the student looked for the book, he, show, he saw that the price of the book was then showing to be just in Indian currency, just rupees 200. So that is the story of Amazon. Now, so upper boundary, upper limit is such that important thing that you have to be taken, you have to take care of. Now let us come to the part of outlier that I was, I was talking about. Suppose 
I have asked one of you to, to study the price for a particular item in Amazon. So you are systematically studying, you are every day you are checking and writing, you're noting down the prices, price of that item. In the first week, you are noting down the price. In the second week, you are noting down the price. In the third week, you are noting down the price. And suppose the prices are increasing linearly. Some linear algorithm has been, uh, the, the price algorithm was kind of linear, linearly written, okay? So you are uh, writing it in this manner. Suddenly, after at the end of six months, you have seen a sudden jump in the price because of some technical issue. Uh, just like this, the, the story which I have told you, a sudden jump in the in the price. That will reflect itself as an outlier in your investigation, in your observation. That's how. This is one instance which I've told you about, which I'm telling you about how the outliers can creep in inside your data. So my point is that if you want to find the correlation between two variables, you have to get rid of the outlier. Otherwise your correlation coefficient calculation is not right. Okay. So I hope you have understood that the point, the outlier, uh, is often left undiscussed in the class. So I have actually spent a significant amount of time to discuss about th this particular issue of outlier. You just keep in mind, next time you go to calculate correlation coefficient between two random variables. Okay, so <clears throat> let us go back to the note. Now, here is a problem in front of you. Problem number one. The following is a sample of 10 recently released first time federal prisoners. The data give their crime, their sentence and the actual time they served. And these are the crimes for which they were sentenced and these were the crimes for which they served the sentence. So some 10 criminals data has been taken under into consideration. This represent the sentence in months. This represent the time served in months. It has been asked to draw the scatter diagram or scatter plot for the figure for this particular example. And then we are supposed to find the sample correlation coefficient between the two. Question is, what does this say about the relationship between the length of a sentence and time actually served? So with the Excel, I have plotted the scatter diagram where the X axis represent the sentence uh in months and y axis represent the time served so this is the scatter plot and here this particular item look at this item you can think that since there is a huge gap between these two it is outlier but it is not it is not an outlier. Why? Because if you try to draw a kind of line through these points, it will fall in the, it will fall on the line. Outlier doesn't come because there is a huge gap in this particular case, because this gap is because you couldn't collect the data. You didn't get the data somehow. This part of data were missing. And therefore, there is a huge gap. So this is not an outlier, remember. If I draw, if I try to draw the a kind of line like this, this will fall near the line or on the line. Outliers will be like this. Suppose you are drawing a line like this. Some points are scattered around it. But the outlier point will be like this. 
far away from the line. Okay, so this is not, these two scenarios are different. So don't think that this point is outlier. If it were an outlier, I could have omitted it, but I didn't. So I first plot, plotted the scatter diagram. After that, what I did, because you will not be able to do the thing with the help of uh, software uh, in the examination, the physical examination. I don't not, I'm not talking about the online examination. I don't know how you give the online examination, what sort of invigilation remain, are there, what sort of criteria and what are the restrictions? I'm not talking about that. But if you have to, you are using software, that is a very, that is a good, good thing. But at the same time, you have to know that how these things are done with the help of manual calculation. So as we know that the correlation coefficient is given by the formula, as I wrote in the previous cases, let, is, let me write the formula once again, so that it remains in front of you. The correlation coefficient is given by this formula, one by n summation x y, x bar, y bar, by one by n summation x square minus x bar square root, one by n summation y square, y bar square root, then you will see that I need to calculate x, y because x, y is present. I need to calculate x square because x square is present. I need to calculate y square because y square is present. So I have manually calculated all these items. x, y means the product of these two. 44 multiplied by 24 gives this. 30 multiplied by 12 gives this and so on. x square means I'm taking the square of these items. y square means I'm taking the square of these items. I need summation x, y, so I'm taking the sum of this column. I need summation x square, I am taking the sum of this column. I need summation y square, I'm taking the sum of this column. And since I'm, I also need x bar, and we know that x bar is given by one by n summation x, i, y bar is given by one by n summation y, i. So I'm taking the summation of this column too. Okay, now after calculating all these summations, we'll put the values in the respective formula. And after putting the values, we can, we have found that RXY was coming out to be approximately equal to one, okay? So from the above calculation as well from the scattered diagram, it can be easily shown that there is a strong positive correlation between the variables, sentence and time served. This means that if the sentence is linearly increasing, then time served is also linearly increasing. Now, I will ask you, I will ask you to practice calculating the correlation coefficient between the variables, both by Excel as well as by uh, as well as uh, by manual calculation, you practice both of these things. Okay, because uh, if you want to write the algorithm for calculating the correlation coefficient, you have to have some idea about how these are manually calculated. It may, so also, it may also happen that you are not uh, exposed to any kind of software, but you have to deal with correlation coefficient, how to deal with that. You can have many situations where you need to do some sort of calculation using manual, using manual uh, pen and paper. So manual calculation first, then I'm suggesting you to go for using any kind of software. Statistical calculation are also done with the help of Python. It can also be done with the help of R statistical software. But I, I do not know about Python. I know a little, very little bit about R. I do not have any access of R software right now at this moment. So I wanted to show you the calculation by software, which was easily available to me. And that is 
and not to me only available to all and that is only it can be the microsoft excel which is easily available in microsoft excel the background calculation algorithm is written by c++ so therefore and it is easily accessible so better you have to you have to be, become efficient in handling excel for statistical calculation and then you can use any any software of your choice later on so my first thing is that my my first point from this particular session was that my one that i'm, I'm going to summarize what i i've taught you in this in these two sessions of today's class i talked about correlation coefficient i asked you to calculate correlation coefficient only after plotting the scatter diagram if the scatter diagram showing any is showing any outlier get rid of the outlier and then you calculate the uh, correlation coefficient correlation coefficient is positive when both the variables have the same tendency either increasing or decreasing correlation coefficient is negative if the tendency of the two variables are just opposite to one another correlation coefficient between two variables is zero means that they are not correlated at all so for example one example i can cite is beauty and intelligence there is no correlation between the two items beauty and intelligence but that these things this issue will be discussed later on i'm not elaborating that thing and uh, also i have told you that uh, correlation coefficient uh gives you some sort of association between the variables where don't think that kind of causation effect is present causation effect shouldn't be considered in calculating the correlation coefficient between the two variables these points you have to keep in mind i'm i'm concluding my today's session just with the statement of the following theorem we already know that the correlation coefficient is perfect the cor correlation between the two variable is perfect positive if the value is 1 the correlation coefficient between the two variable is perfect negative if the value is minus 1 but in general it has can be shown that the correlation coefficient the two variables x and y is actually lying between minus 1 and plus 1 remember this is a theorem here in the below this particular theorem i have actually written its proof which i'm going to explain in the next class so with this i'm going to conclude my today's session i hope you are able to understand the points of correlation coefficient in in today in the afternoon i have a session with cacb i am going to i am going to continue uh, further on correlation coefficient in the CACB as well. So this proof of the theorem, the discussion about the correlation coefficient being zero, that will be discussed with the CACB students. And uh, you will get to know these things from the video uploaded after that. Okay. So with this, I'm going to conclude my today's session. Hope to meet you tomorrow in the in my scheduled class hour. Till then, bye. But at the end of the day, I must say to all of you that please don't stop studying. Okay? Just study and learn things as much as you can.